Hey, welcome back. My name is Ed. Today we are going to be talking about how to get your car ready for a remote tune. Although this is going to be mainly talking about spec Vs, uh, the same concept applies to any other Nissan for the most part. So what is tuning? It's basically adjusting the way that your car's computer calculates its input data. Don't worry, we're not going to get too technical in this video, but I am going to cover the key basics of e-tuning. So what is e-tuning in this case? E-tuning, I'm referring to tunes that's done through email that you upload into your car's computer yourself with Uprev. I would like to thank Bobby Haskell for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for better performance, better gas mileage, better drivability, then the hot sauce tune may be for you. It is the tuner I use for my own car. So back to the video. So before you even contact the tuner, there's a few things that you need to do to make sure things go smoothly. Let's cover what you will need to do the hot sauce tune. You will need a laptop. You will need an uprev cable. You will need an uprev license. You will need a wideband gauge if your car is not equipped. And you will need CAN communication going to the OBD2 port which you will need to add if the car is not equipped. Until you have all this ready to go and straighten out, there's really no sense to even talking to the tuner because the tuner is not going to be able to do anything unless you're ready to go on your end. So let's deep dive a little bit more into the Sentras uh, because that's where most of my audience is from. So we're going to be talking about the Spec V. So if you got a 2002, 2003, you are going to need to upgrade your ECU to a newer ECM. Uh, you also need to run a patch harness or redo your wiring. I do have a video covering uh, that up here. So check that out. If you got a 2004, 2005, those cars come with a narrow band sensor. You will need to add a wide band sensor to the car. So to add a wide band, you're going to need to get the sensor and the gauge. Uh, they typically are going to be sold together. And the one I recommend is going to be Innovate because it directly connects to Uprev for data logging. So it makes your data logging process a lot easier and you're not having to use separate software either for it. Now, if you got a 2006, you don't need to worry about the wideband because there's already a wideband in the car and it's hooked directly up to the ECU and will show up during your data logs. Next thing is you need to get Uprev to communicate with the computer. And the way it does that is through what's called CAN communication. So on 04 and up, there's a CAN communication line going from the car's ECM to the gauge cluster. And what the CAN communication is, is basically two wires and it acts as a data line. So think of it as like an internet cable or like a phone line. Uh, that way the computer can talk to the gauges. Well, you need the computer to be able to talk directly to the OBD2 port. So you need the gauges to talk directly to the OBD2 port so that way Uprev can be loaded through the OBD2 port. And so the way you get your CAN bus communication to your OBD2 port is basically just tapping into the lines that go to the gauges and bringing it down to your OBD2 port. I do have a video on that. So check that out when you're ready to do your CAN lines. Uh, you can get the CAN lines um, online, pretty readily available. There's some generic ones. There's ones that are marketed towards this car. I'm going to touch on this real briefly, but the OBD2 port uh, does use a K-line communication. That's where you get your codes and stuff through. The K-line is a much slower form of communication, and Uprev does not support the K-line for uploading ROM files. So you can kind of think of the K-line as like dial-up and the regular CAN communication, the high and low. You can think of it as like DSL. Now you need to get your Uprev together. I have a video on your uprev option, so check it out there, 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 wherever it's at. So the bare minimum you need to get started to get a successful tune on there is you're going to need the uprev standard cable and you will need the uprev standard license. Both those need to be standard. Or you can go with the pro if you want to spend more, but if you're paying a tuner, it's kind of pointless. So one thing you can do is they do sell it as a group, but just Buy the two parts individually, you'll save yourself a couple dollars versus buying the two together. Okay, great, you got everything. You paid the tuner. You're good to go, right? Well, maybe not. So before you even start the tuning process, you need to ensure that your car has absolutely no issues. 
A tune will not fix a broken car. Your car needs to be working 100%. Any little gremlins, wire issues, weird codes that come up randomly, you need to get those fixed. Yes, the tuner may be able to turn off certain check engine lights, but that doesn't fix the issue. So once that's all set, you need to make sure your car is 100% charged and your laptop is 100% charged. Because when you start uploading tunes to your car, if your car battery dies or the laptop battery dies halfway through, which for some reason, uploading a tune actually takes up a lot of electric on your car battery. If any of those happen, you chance breaking your ECU. So Uprev has all the instructions you need to get the software set up on their website. Feel free to check it out. I will not think you're any less of a man if you're using a set of instructions for this. You're still a man in my book. So what to expect when you're going through the e-tune process? The very first thing is you're gonna give the tuner your ROM number and let him know what kind of modifications you have. He will take that information, he will give you a base tune. Once you get the base tune, you load that into your car's computer. Once you load in your car's computer, you're gonna do a data log. Uh, he's gonna ask for several different types of data logs. It's gonna be something like a cold startup, it's going to be maybe like first through third, half throttle, quarter throttle, three quarters throttle, full throttle, uh, regular cruising, driving what you normally would drive at. Um, the goal with a lot of the tuning is to get to drivability and, and get the car, make sure the car runs smooth and has the power in the range that you normally drive the car in. So in your data log, you need to make sure you have a variety of conditions. More data, the better. I would rather give the tuner more data than he needs than not enough to make a complete tune. Although the tuner can easily see your speed and your throttle inputs and know what you're doing by looking at the data log, it wouldn't hurt to be nice to your tuner and actually label the data logs on what it is so they don't have to look through it, figure it out, and then label it themselves. I'm sure they would really appreciate that. So be nice to your tuner. Okay, so you got your data log uh, from your first ROM file. What happens is you're gonna send that data log to your tuner, and then he's gonna go ahead and revise that ROM file and send you back that ROM file. You're then gonna load up that ROM file into your car, and then he's gonna have you data log again. And then how, depending on how that goes, you'll just keep repeating the process until the tune is 100% and the tuner hits all the targets that they need to hit to make it a safe, reliable tune. I hope this helps. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you wanna support this channel or this video, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so, so you can see more videos like this. I hope you enjoy the song that I made. Necesitas un poco más de velocidad Agarra la botella, la salsa del amor El secreto para hacer tu hija volar Hot sauce to make it my car go faster yeah. Spicing up the ride, nothing can outlast her But every drop I feel the power ignite Hot sauce still taking me into overdrive You might have a Stanley Cup, but I got a gallon water jug